Welcome back to my third place network. I am your host, Evo, and this is another awesome episode coming to you from Under the Apron. As you heard on our last episode, I had a few friends on the pod, on the potty pod. Menace, as you all knew, as a friend of the show, and that was her 11th episode that she has graced us with since I brought her on in 2022. I want to keep that going. I want to keep this momentum going and just bring friends along on the show. Some you may know, others you are going to get to know and meet. My next guest is a dear friend of mine, the show, as well as mine. She's been supportive ever since the start of 2022, and I've been wanting to get all those supporters on the show to get to know them more. She's been listening since episode one, I believe, and although... Although she has very limited knowledge of wrestling, she still decided to watch WrestleMania 40 with us. We're not going to ask her some of those questions just yet, but I did ask her if she wanted to do either do music, movies, or TV shows, and she chose something that we both love and enjoy, and that is the Netflix series of Cobra Kai. That's right. We are doing the Cobra Kai fandom. So welcome everybody for the first time you all usually hear her name at the end when i'm shouting out the supporters here's the hype queen herself please welcome brandy brandy how you doing i'm great how are you i'm great i'm glad you're here finally well thank you for having me yes thank you for stopping in thank you for hanging out with me thank you for bringing cover kai to the forefront again be like hey let's watch it let's Let's take a gander at it again. Hmm. Yes, we have to do that with the new ones coming. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of bringing back an old segment, Backdropped and Backlot, and Brandy brought up the idea that we could discuss Cobra Kai. But we weren't sure when we were going to start, but we just knew we wanted to do Season 6. Well, we wanted to do it before Season 6 came out. And then the update came out about Season 6, and here's what we know so far. Season 6 will come out as three parts. Part 1 is set for July 18th, 2024. That's in a few months. Part 2 is set for November 24th, 2024. And Part 3, if they do the four months apart again, will out in March of 2025. Each part will have five episodes. Part 1 will have five. Part 2 will have five. And Part 3 will have five. We are getting a total of 15 episodes for season six. How do you feel about that? I'm freaking excited about that. <laughs> I was excited also. Uh, I mean, like, five episodes for July? Wait, why not just make a movie out of it? Yeah, they should. That would be a good idea. But- Every episode is, what, 30 minutes long? Well, so far they have been. So far they have been. Who knows what they'll throw at us with the new ones. Right. So they're changing it for 15 episodes. Might as well change it to an hour episode, 45 minutes episode. Uh, Maybe, you know. But the whole thing of part one, part two, and part three, make a movie. Just make a movie already. Do we, the- like... They can't do that. They have to leave us with cliffhangers. Uh, they do. Um, but I'm excited. Are you like? Are you excited as much as much as I'm excited? Because we love Cobra Kai. <laughs> like it's been a our, long time coming. I've been waiting forever for this. This is our fandom. We love Cobra Kai. Yeah. So what we're going to do is go through all the episodes, tell we tell you what we thought about them, the music, the Easter eggs, because there are so many since they reference back to the movies. And for those wondering, we're going to go back to the movies as well, possibly around the time that the show is on. We're basically going to do the same thing I do when I review Heels Glow or any other movies on the show on here. Uh, Brandy. I must ask you, though, how did you know about Cobra Kai and how excited were you when it first came out? Put me on the spot. Um, I was really excited about it. I'll say that because I'm a huge I've always been a huge Karate Kid fan. 
Um, so when I heard about this, I was like, what is this about? I did not watch it when it was on YouTube. I had no idea about that. Um, I didn't know about it until I saw it coming on Netflix. Um, and I'm the type of person that likes to watch trailers of new things coming out. So I saw it that way. I saw it by a trailer. I saw it was coming to Netflix and I was on it as soon as it came out. Um, I, I had no clue that it was out on YouTube. What? 2000. When was that? When it came out? 2017. 2000, 2017, 18. Yeah. I had no idea. So I was all excited. I thought this was like the first time it was out and then come to find out it already been on YouTube. I'm like, Oh man, I missed this so long ago. So yeah. Um, I was the exact opposite. I like knew about it on YouTube premium and I'm just like, Oh, I can't wait. Telling everybody at work at the casino where I used to work at. It's like, Oh, did you hear about that? I'm the only one there that knows about karate kid and everybody's all freaking, I don't know. They didn't know anything about Cobra Kai. And like, What's that? What's that? It's about the karate kid. I'm a karate kid. I was like, Oh yeah. Ralph Macho. Yeah. And they're making a show about Cobra Kai. And I'm just like telling everybody there. And they're just like, uh huh. Okay, kid, whatever you say. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, fine. You know what? I'll watch it myself. And then YouTube, it came out on YouTube Premium? Premium at YouTube Red? YouTube Red was a thing at the time. YouTube Red was a thing at the time. And they're just like, hey, we're going to make a, a show about Cobra Kai. Our karate Kid is going to be called Cobra Kai. And the first episode is free. And the first two episodes were free. And I'm like, yes, I, I've been wanting to watch this. So I watched the first two episodes for free. And then, like, you know what? Why don't I just start a, a, um, a freaking a thing there on YouTube Red and then a subscri- watch the entire a subscri- season. A sub- subscription? Subscription? Is yeah, why don't I just, just start a subscription on YouTube Red for free, seven days. <laughs> I'm just like I gotta I have I need seven days to watch this and I did for those seven days I did it for free and then I like took it off. It's like maybe next year, maybe they'll come out with season two. Who knows? Wait, right, wait. I, it took you seven days. It took me like oh because I was watching it at work, like oh. on my phone, and I'm just like I don't want to watch these immediately, like because because of the ten episodes, I want to watch them. All right, one. Two and then on the seventh day, I watched um three episodes and I was done with them. Like, oh man, okay, it's time to get rid of the subscription. And I did that it's like for free. I'm good. And then find out that season two, I made another account, another email address, watched it the same way, and I was at work too. So I'm not familiar uh, with YouTube subscriptions. Is it the same as Netflix, where they roll it out all at the same time? It, yeah, all at once. I but, mean. Yeah, all at once. And then, but for some reason, YouTube Red wasn't getting the enough hype or anything at all. So they just killed it. I did hear that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes. So they just killed it. And I'm just like, oh, great. That's freaking wonderful. And that's at the end of season two, they didn't know what to do for season three. And then, like, I waited for three years, two years for it to go on Netflix. So, like, yeah, you, you, like there were some people that like immediately on Netflix. Oh, hey, there's a Cobra Kai season one and two. That's cool. Meanwhile, I waited two years, just the same way as Game of Thrones people. You know, they're like, we waited years. I was like, yeah, I know how you feel now. Yeah, I've never seen that show, so we won't talk about that. Yeah, I don't. I've never seen it either. So no. <laughs> um, I'm gonna tell you a little story I found on the wiki. Brandy, I showed you these two videos that I found. Hmm. Yes, uh, you did. <laughs> The thematic genesis for Cobra Kai began with a few works of pop culture. First, the 2007 music video for the song Sweep the Leg by No More King stars William Napka, who also directed the video, as a caricature of himself as Johnny and features references to the Karate Kid, including cameo appearances by Sapka's former Karate Kid co-stars. Uh, the other guys, the get him a body bag and the, his boys, basically. In a 2010 interview, Zapka jokingly discussed this video in the context of the vision that Johnny was the true hero of the film. 
Next, in June 2010, Macho appeared in Funny or Die's online short, Wax On, Fuck Off, in which his loved ones stage an intervention to for- turn the former child star from a well-adjusted family man into an addict besieged with tabloid scandal in order to help his career, with frequent references to the Karate Kid. A recurring joke in the sketch is that Macho is confused for an adolescent. The short was lauded by TV guys Bruce Fretz, who referred to the video as size splitting in comic gold. And finally, we all know this one. In 2013, Macho and Zabka made guest appearances as themselves in the television sitcom How I Met Your Mother. In the episode titled The Bro Mitzvah, Macho is invited to Barney Stinson's bachelor party, leading to Barney shouting that he hates Macho and that Johnny was the real hero of The Karate Kid. There's a big poster of The Karate Kid above your bed. Hey, Karate Kid's a great movie. It's the story of a hopeful young karate enthusiast whose dreams and moxie take him all the way to the All-Valley Karate Championship. Of course, sadly, he loses in the final round of that nerd kid. But he learns an important lesson about gracefully accepting defeat. (laughs) Wait, when you watch The Karate Kid, you actually root for that mean blonde boy? No. I root for the scrawny loser from New Jersey who barely even knows karate. When I watch The Karate Kid, I root for The Karate Kid, Johnny Lawrence from the Cobra Kai Dojo. Get your head out of your ass, Lily. I remember that episode. I remember that episode. We all remember that episode. Towards the end of the episode of Clown, the party wiped off his makeup and reveals himself as Davka. This influenced the launch of Cobra Kai, which give the balanced perspective for Johnny, Daniel, and other characters. Zab could continue to be a recurring character throughout the ninth season of the show. Calls. I got a call from the, the casting department asking if I wanted to be on an episode of How I Met Your Mother, and of course I said yes without even knowing what it was. They sent me the script. I was playing myself, and I was a clown, and I had no lines. <laughs> I'm like, what do I? But then at the very end, <laughs> I, I say yes. Yeah, you know, I was like, okay, I have absolutely no. It's the safest bet to give an actor, you know, get him on TV and give no lines until the very end, and I have to wipe my face off. Yeah. And then they wrote a part for Ralph, and I was like, well, I don't know if Ralph's gonna to do it. And then we went a little you, back and forth on it. I've always I was a fan of the show, and the fact that they teed it. They've teed it up for seasons, the whole Barney Stinson concept that the real Karate Kid is William Zabka, not this nerdy Jersey Italian guy. We had a moment uh, after the show when we finished shooting, and I was still in my gi, and he was, and I said, get behind the bar. Remember that? Yeah, we took some great We took some shots. It was just something about the two of us being there for real, and, and we sat at the McFadden's bar. And I had him take some pictures of him pouring me drinks in my. I was in a gi. suit pouring him drinks. He's yeah. filling the gi, looking. Why we walked away? There's something we, in this picture. We still love yeah. this picture. And, yeah. and interestingly enough, when I, we met John, Josh, and Hayden, I mean that was, we were toying around with, okay, how can we do something cool? Maybe we'll start small. And it, fortunately, it was uh, usurped by a much bigger idea that's uh, that's out there for the world right now. Yeah. Uh, and then Cobra Kai was greenlit in August 2017 with 10 half-hour episodes. Written and executive produced by Josh Heald, John Hurwitz, and Hayden Schlossberg. Although the series received offers from Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and AMC, it ultimately ended up on the subscription service YouTube Red. So they offered it to Netflix, and Netflix is all like, yeah, I'll take it. And then they're like, nah, we good. We want to go with YouTube Red. And then two years for Netflix, be like, yeah, we got this. <laughs> yeah, but do we- do we know why, like, Netflix changed yeah. their minds? No, I don't know. We don't mm-hmm. know why. We'll probably find out by the end of season two. I was like, I'll look it up. Okay, we, we need to uh, do that. We need to do that. The trio was joined by executive producers James Lasseter and Kali Pinkett of Overbrook Entertainment in association with Sony Pictures Television. Kali Pinkett, do you guys know who that is? Overbrook Entertainment is an American production company based on Culver City, California. It was founded by partners Will Smith and James Lasseter in 1998, around the same time production where Wild Wild West began. So Kali Pinkett is Jada Pinkett's brother. I did not so, know that. Cobra Kai is executive produced by Will Smith, who also executive produced his son's Cobra, I mean, Karate Kid movie. Even though the creators of this show have gone on record that that Karate Kid doesn't count in this Cobra Kai universe. So Will Smith is all like, eh, cool. 
I'll still produce it. No worries. <laughs> it's like, I love that little thing right there where it's like, nah, don't worry about it. We got this. <laughs> uh, YouTube Premium released the first season on May 2nd, 2018, and the second season on April 24th, 2019. The creator of the series explored moving to another platform ahead of the season two premiere, but deal did not go through. The first episode, which was posted on YouTube for free, along with two episodes, well, episode two, had been viewed 5.4 million times within the first 24 hours. While it was noted that a response had been in part a result of YouTube releasing the episode for free, it was noted by Cinema Blend's Britt Lawrence that YouTube Red's new series debuted numbers that made rival streaming services take notice. By October 30th, 2018, ahead of the second season premiere, YouTube was promoting the report that the first episode had been viewed over 50 million times. The first episode was number eight on YouTube's list of top 10 trending videos of 2018. So now that we know about the history of why this show came about, let's get right to the episodes. What we are going to attempt to do is review four episodes, three or four episodes, give or take. We'll see how this one goes. Uh, we decided on three episodes. The fourth episode is going to be a standalone, and we're going to go through all that. All that. And uh, we watched it all this week. And we're going to tell you what we saw of them. If it gets too long, the next show we do about Cobra Kai will be probably be shorter. But we wanted to discuss these episodes because they're awesome, and we love Cobra Kai. Well, Plus, now it's we, also part. We didn't watch yes. it. We rewatched it. Make that clear. We rewatched. Yeah, we rewatched and reviewed. We're going to yeah. rewatch and review this, basically. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy, clarifying that. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's also part of the Backdrops and Backlot segment that I've introduced back in 2022 when I was reviewing Heels and Glow. So the first episode is titled Ace Degenerate. It came out May 2nd, 2018. The episode's titles Ace Degenerate is a reference to the first scene where Johnny appears in The Karate Kid. After one of her friends referred to him as an Ace Degenerate, Johnny claimed he was an ex Degenerate now that he was a senior. Oh, Karate Kid. I remember that movie. We're going to have to watch that, too, and yes. go through this. Yes. All of, all Karate Kids. Mm, maybe not all of them. Maybe not the 2010 Karate Kid. Okay. But well, all the Karate Next Next Karate Kid? I, I think we should watch Next Karate Kid. Because, because yeah, there's talk that. about... Okay, well, we won't go there yet. Okay, okay. We'll think about it. What do you guys think? Should we watch the Next Karate Kid? Email us from under the at gmail.com. Let us know. I'll put it in the Q&A also. Uh, this episode was written by Josh Heal, John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg. Directed by John Hurwitz and Hayden Schlossberg. Um, main cast consists of Ralph Macho as Daniel LaRusso, obviously. William Zabka as John Lawrence. Courtney Hengler as Amanda LaRusso, Daniel's wife. Cholo Maridueña as Miguel Diaz, Mary Mauser as Samantha LaRusso, Johnny's daughter, Ed Asner as Sid Weinberg is the old man from Up as Johnny's stepfather. Sednots is 33 years after the events of the 1984 All Valley Karate Tournament. Johnny Lawrence's life has taken a rocky turn as he tries to forget a past that constantly haunts him. He seeks redemption by reopening the infamous Cobra Kai Karate Dojo, but the Lawrence LaRusso rivalry of yesteryear reignited when their lives become intertwined with the next generation of karate kids. Uh, 1984, that's like 40 years now. Oh my god. Fuck. Oh I'm my old. god. <laughs> Why'd you have to remind uh, me that? What the hell? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. 1984. Anyway. Um, wait, wait. Okay, so show, 1984 is that when the first Karate Kid came out? The f- right. Yeah, and when the All Valley Karate Championships came happened. Okay, so I was I'm trying to think how old I was. Eleven, twelve. Can we? Can we not? Why <laughs> does it make you feel that? old? <laughs> it makes me feel old already. I'm. I'm not gonna discuss this. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> okay, let's move to. along. We don't. We don't have to. 
move along. The show opens with a flashback to December 19th, 1994, and the All Valley Karate Championships. The finals between Johnny Lawrence and Daniel LaRusso, with the latter scoring two points in the beginning of the fight. Johnny gets told by his sensei, it's Kreese, to sweep the leg after tying the match two points apiece. The final a point is awarded to LaRusso, and then a close up of Johnny Lawrence lying on the mat after the crane kick is performed. Face to Johnny in present day lying in bed with beer bottles all over his bed. All over. Uh, the opening flashback in 1994 has been completely re edited and contains footage not seen in the original movie. The close up shots of Johnny getting kicked in the face and falling to the ground are part of an alternate footage not utilized in the original film. It just feels like when he falls down and that whole shot of him on the ground feels new. Doesn't feel like it had that 1980s grainy footage. Yeah, I wonder why they did that, actually. Because, yeah. I wonder like, why they did it that way. Like, they should have just had the... I feel like they, they shouldn't have zoomed in and showed that. They should have just went with the old the old clip, the original clip. What do you think? The old clip, yeah. Yeah, like... A, a, I would have wanted to have like that grainy footage, like, oh, yeah. this is 1984. This yeah. is still 1984 footage, and but it feels too like, um, what do I want to say, like too in, too in depth, too like now, too modern. Yeah, too modern. Uh, a picture on his refrigerator reveals that he has an estranged son, Bobby, Robbie, Robbie Keane, who previously played soccer and his team won the league in 2010. After eating fried bologna with ketchup for breakfast in his lonely bachelor pad, he takes out the trash, brushes off his new teenage neighbor, Miguel Diaz, who won't stop talking about him moving from Riverside. Johnny calls him a noodle and explains <laughs> to him he's been living there for 10 years, and the only good thing about living there is he doesn't have to talk to anybody. Miguel tells him to have a nice day. Johnny jumps in his red Pontiac Firebird to head to do his job as a handyman. Nothing but a good time by Poison is played as Johnny's on the way to work. He sees a billboard for Daniel LaRusso's chain of car lock, much to his chagrin. <laughs> the Cobra Kai logo appears on the screen, and we see montage footage of the neighborhood of Lucia, California. He stops right next to a jogger and says hey to her, but she calls him a creep as she runs off. I love the fact that he's like been living there for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> you still look it's like uh oh, Johnny. I mean uh oh, LaRusso. Ugh. Yeah, but how about the what? fact that he is uh, his firebird it's firebird, isn't it? He drives a firebird. Yeah, it's a firebird. Yeah. It's a firebird. But, like they make his character just stuck in the eighties. Yeah, he that's what I was gonna say. Like, yes. He is like so out of time. Like mm -hmm. he has an age a bit and he's still stuck in eighties. Like he doesn't know what? Even down to like his still... sunglasses. Did did you notice that? Did you notice that? I had a pair of those no. sunglasses when I was like 16 years old. I'm telling you. Oh my God. Are those the Easter eggs from the 80s that he's still wearing 80s fashion? Yeah. He's out of touch. The sunglasses just... was the first thing. I was like, I had a pair of those. Like, what? No, we won't say how long ago, but yeah. He's still watching 80s movies. He's still like stuck out there, like, ugh, him again. But like, take a new fight, man. <laughs> um, this last scene where he's like saying hey to the jogger reminded me so much of the Billy Madison scene <laughs> when he goes back to high school. Okay. Uh, Billy, yeah, Billy shows up in his Pontiac Trans Am with the stroke by Billy Squire playing in the background. He gets out of his car and sits on it, and then he's like looking, scoping out the people wearing the same what, 80s shirt that he used to wear back in high school? And he's just like, you know, what, what was it? Ario Speedwagon. He was wearing an Ario Speedwagon shirt. And he's just like, what's going on? How you doing? Hey, what's up? You know, like, like being a freaking creep and everything. And everybody is just like, ew, you know, like, who is this freaking boomer? <laughs> it's like everybody in the high school. And then like, why are you trying to show off to the girls, the high school girls, when you're just like, a 25 year old man and they're like 16 year old well that's funny you said you're referencing him and adam sandler because you know what movie i it it made me think of was click and the scene with adam sandler in the car do you remember that scene 
as ever. I've never seen what? Sick. Is that uh, the remote? With the remote? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's the scene he's in the car and they do like a, he, he does, he has a remote. So we've never seen it, but he fast forwards and can rewind and slows down. And there's a jogger that runs by and he slows it down to watch her run. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, that's uh, what it reminded me of. Yeah. Okay. Um, everybody knows about that scene. I, I understand that scene. <laughs> I remember that. Um, that's funny. Two, two Adam Sandler movies. That's crazy. Yeah, that's weird that uh, you said that because I was like, oh, no, this Adam Sandler movie. Um, also, the fried bologna in the beginning. You've eaten one, haven't you? Yes. It so tastes have I. so much better when you have no money and no egg for breakfast <laughs> and you just like want yep. something right away. So you put some bologna on the stove, fry it up, yep. tortilla. We're good. We're good. We're oh, good. I've never done but tortilla. Yet, I've done it on bread, but never tortilla. Right. Never done it with ketchup, but I've never done it with ketchup either. I'm just just the fried bologna. Right. Like, y'all need to try that if you fried bologna with ketchup. Let's try it. Let's see how try, it tastes. Try it with ketchup. Okay. Yeah, we should do that. I'll have to try it with a tortilla though, because I've never tried it with tortilla. Okay. Definitely with a tortilla. Is- Freaking amazing. I love it. Um, while it's his handyman job in a gated community, Johnny has not been treated well. Poor guy. He's following along since way since the country club of his youth, cleaning out the gutters of leaves and a dead rat while the children are playing with their squirt guns, firing at Johnny, who almost falls off because of slippery. An argument with a customer leads to him getting fired. She wanted her TV screen in front of the door, but Johnny plays it in front of another door. He says he can do it later, but please just stop bitching at him. Next scene, he is talking to his boss and gets fired call, calling the customer a bitch, but says there's a difference between being a bitch and bitching. Is there, is there, is there though? <laughs> yes, yes, there is. I, yes, there is. I'm going to have to say there is. a Yeah. You're bitching at me, but you're not a bitch? Okay. Yeah, there's a difference. We're, we're going to agree to disagree on this one. All right, bitching customer lady comes back at a later date in another episode, which is hilarious. Uh, later, Johnny goes to get a slice of pizza at the local bodega. The bodega owner doesn't use gloves and continues holding the pizza with his hands while looking for a plate. That's disgusting. Yeah, it is. Uh, Miguel is there also trying to buy Pepto Bismol for his grandma. Johnny says he doesn't care. He comes out of the store trying to eat his pizza and is berated by homeless Lynn to go somewhere else. This is her spot. <laughs> uh, Miguel comes out of the store and a group of bigger boys start to bully him Kyler, played by Joe Seo pours the bottle of Pepto-Bismol and calls him Maria from now on uh, he throws him against the hood of Johnny's car Johnny objects they turn their attention to him Kyler, sings. Kyler says he thinks he recognizes him as the guy who cleaned out his septic tank the other bully says it's probably why he smells like shit Kyler pushes Johnny, knocking his pizza away. Okay, did Lynn grab the pizza to eat it, or did she have her own? Um, I think she grabbed the pizza to eat it, to be honest, because, yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> she's, all, she's all the way by the garbage over there. And the fact that there's a fight about to go on, and she just grabbed the pizza. It's like, mm. what? She, <laughs> like, she was hungry. What do you expect? <laughs> like, fuck this fight. Let me eat. <laughs> Uh, Johnny Roundhouse kicks Kyler and holds on to his leg. He forgot to stretch. What is the first rule of doing something, especially when you're this old? You, you have stretch. to stretch. Yeah. You stretch. You need to like be limber. And you know, if you're gonna do a roundhouse kick at 40, 50 years old and to a bunch of high schoolers, you need to stretch, you know? Yeah, but when did he have time to stretch? He was you know, he was defending <laughs> Menudo. I mean, what do you expect? He was defending Menudo. Oh, God. The bullies outnumber Johnny 41, but they are beaten by Johnny, who gets makes and arrested by cop who finally show up. They don't show up right before. They just show up now. That's great. Um, the fight between Johnny, Kyler, and his friends is similar to how Daniel was saved by Mr. Miyagi from Johnny. However, unlike yes. that fight, Johnny gets arrested for assaulting Kyler and his friends, whereas Mr. Miyagi didn't. It's okay when you're a good guy. Right. It's not when, 
bad guy. Mr. Miyagi <laughs> is not going to get arrested. He's a legend. He's ninja vanished. He ninjas his way out of there. Uh, early the next morning, Johnny arrived home from his night in jail, only to be accosted by Miguel, who asked him about the technique he used that night. Uh, Johnny clarifies that it was old school karate, but refuses to teach Miguel despite his pleading. He goes inside and sees his stepfather waiting for him. Uh, sick of bailing Johnny out, Sid gives Johnny a check as an effort to buy him out. I still hear that old man come up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's all I hear whenever I see him. It's like, oh shit, no. Uh, Johnny tears up the check and Sid leaves in disgust. Uh, Johnny then proceeds to get drunk in front of the TV, watching Iron Eagle, another '80s movie. Yeah, <sighs> I I didn't even catch that one. I did not catch that one. <laughs> so I was like, I wait, isn't this from the '80s? Also, he's so out of touch. Uh, yet another ad for LaRusso Auto Group comes on, starring Daniel. He tries to change the channel, but his remote is out of battery, so he then throws his beer bottle at the screen and leaves breaking the TV. And oh, and Johnny. let's and let's remember it's an it's an old TV as well. Oh, with a remote. <laughs> it's like at least he's like he has a remote. He's like modern day on there, but he's still watching old movies and listening to old music and putting on some old sunglasses <laughs> oh, driving his old car um though he's been drinking john decides to go for a drive head games by foreigner another 80s song yes. yep yep yeah. and the place while he drives and happily reminisces about the times he spent with his cobra kai friends and ali but then remembers daniel not only as the one who stole ali but also getting beaten by Mr. Miyagi and his defeat. He suffered to Daniel at the tournament. I love the whole montage. It's like he has him and his friends. He starts laughing and smiling and stuff. And then he sees Ali smiling. And it, Ali smiling wasn't even like during them two talking. It was during when she was talking with Daniel. With Daniel, yeah. So, I love her smile, by the way. She has she has the nicest smile. I just want to say she that. Did. She did. Like, yeah. She did. She did. And he's just like, you know, he giggled. He looks like he's giggling at the fact that she's smiling. It's like, that's smiling for you, bud. <laughs> that smile was for someone else. <laughs> and then, like, for some reason, his bubble burst because that whole scene of um, Daniel and Allie playing soccer, hitting them with their knees. And it's like, how'd you get that scene? You weren't even in the scene, dude. How'd you get that head in, had that picture in your head? You weren't even in the scene, dude. Um, was he in this? I forgot. I forgot. Let me. No, Who was in that remember. scene? Yeah, because like, how did he get that image in his head? Like, oh, they're playing soccer together. Oh, fuck. He was, <laughs> like what? Yeah, he was. He was there. He was. Oh yeah, he was in the background. Like, uh, yeah, he he was in the background because, or he was there. He he was there at the beach. Or no, they drove up on their bikes. He was there at the beach. They. Oh showed up um he's there at the high school he's watching them to hit the soccer ball with their leg with their knees um so we're just gonna say he, he, was, he was always there watching them he was always the he was there somewhere yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, was he was a creeper back then he was a stalker um the whole thing with mr miyagi and the tournament he is like having a rough time and every time he's like thinks about it he's in his head basically and every time he thinks about it he's drinking more like oh son of a bitch it's like he, he just went through the entire emotion of karate kid one <laughs> it's like we don't know anything else he's just like oh i hate my life <laughs> um he ends up at the sports complex, which was the site of his humiliation. He recalls the time his mentor and sensei, John Kreese, attempted to kill him in the parking lot after failing to win the match. Um, but he doesn't remember that Mr. Miyagi saved him. I know. I don't, I don't know why they left that out. They left out part two, like for convenience. <laughs> it's like, nah. Like he, they, they ruined me at the tournament, and then he tried to kill me. But I don't remember anything after after that. 
it's like even like at the very end of Cobra uh, Karate Kid, he says, um, he gives him he gives Daniel the trophy. He's all like, go for it, you know. Yes, I like, loved it. I, I I loved that part though. Like it it made him look like he was a he was a good guy, you know. And they redo the redid the whole thing with the bad guy again. I know. Um. A car full of teens slams into his car, and they drive away. To add insult to injury, the car gets towed to his nemesis place, La Russo Auto Group. The next morning, Johnny attempts to disguise himself and tries to quietly tow his car to another lot. However, Daniel walks by and notices him. Johnny? Johnny Lawrence? I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Johnny's uh, like, I've been fucking trying to hide from you for 30 years. He just shows up one day. And Daniel is, like doesn't even know where he's at. He's just yeah, like, oh, they're, shit. They're in the, the same town. They reside in the same town, but they've never run into each other before this. That's or kind of weird. Johnny's, Johnny's like seen him like, oh, he's there. I'm going to go the other way. But Daniel like finally realizes, oh, you've been living here the entire time? No way. Hey, that's, give me a hug, buddy. That's no. because Daniel is living the good life. Right? Uh, Daniel's happy to see him and calls over his associate. Daniel, prompted by his cousin Louie, ribs him a little about losing the All Valley Tournament. Hey, if you want to know, I kick him in the face. I kick his face. <laughs> uh, Johnny claimed that Daniel won with an illegal kick in the face. Uh, Daniel says, sweep my leg. <laughs> it's like, all right, guys. Anoush, he's there also. Um, Daniel's other associate just like tells them, like, all right, don't fight here. Uh, Daniel then offers to fix Johnny's car for free. As Johnny reluctantly accepts, he turns and leaves when he recognizes Daniel's daughter as the girl in the back seat of the car for a teen who hit his car. Three girls. No big deal. Uh, the Chicago Bulls entrance theme. <laughs> I love that. But it's really called serious by the Alan Parsons Project. is used when Johnny goes home. He changes his mind and then tells Miguel he'll teach him karate. He uses the checks that gave him to reopen the Cobra Kai dojo, vowing to teach Miguel the same kind of karate his sensei taught him. Ooh. What teach you, you everything, kid. What do you think? What do you think was going through his mind, like as to why he wanted to? What made you? What do you think made change his mind? Made him change his mind about opening that? Like what? Where was it? What was it? Him seeing Daniel? What do you think it was? It like was that made him click like, to change that. All right, I've been avoiding this guy for thirty years, thirty plus years. Maybe it's time he finally sees me. He like not only see me at the uh, Chicago dealership, but like, hey, I've seen your freaking billboards all over the place for twenty years, whatever. Now you're gonna see my dojo for the next few years. So, like, I understand you have a daughter and she hit my car. Like, I don't know for some reason. I was like, hey, let me change my mind right now. Sure, Miguel, let me teach you how to fight. I just, I wonder that. Well, because I really, and I don't want to get ahead here, but I really think with him and his um, relationship with his own son, you know, he, I don't know. I just, I see, or should I say when I first saw it, I, I was seeing that I'm like, this is going to be a relationship between him and Miguel. Like, it's going to be Miguel. good. Like, like, yeah, yeah. I guess that's a relationship he didn't have with Robbie. Basically. Right. Right. I'm going to teach, you. Right. teach you how to play ball. So yeah. Teach you yeah. Karate. Yeah. Like instead of, you know, Hey, I'm going to teach you to play baseball or whatever. I'm, this is what I'm going to do. That's, that's what I guess I was hoping for when I first saw this for the first time is that, that was my, my thought. I know that changed yeah. as time went on, but yeah. Right, and that was the end of that episode. What did you think of it? Did it hook you right away? Oh yeah, oh absolutely did. I I, I like the way I love how they how they end they end it to where you can't not watch it. And I guess that's where I went back to. How could you not just sit and binge watch each episode right away? Like I don't know how you could not do that. I did that. 
there was just no way I had to watch the whole thing. And then I got really sad when it ended. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I watched it at work. I did. I like, I was a runner. I had to like do all kinds of stuff. So I had like an hour to prep the entire area. And then like I finished 30 minutes early. So in those 30 minutes, I like ended up sitting down and watch the show. And from there, I'm just like, all right, I got to watch the second episode. Um, break happened, and I'm just like sitting there watching the second episode. And I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. I can't. And then, like, realizing, I'm like, oh, shoot, I got to pay. It's like, all right, um, let me see how if did, I can find it for free. I was going to say, how did that make like, you feel? You were probably pretty mad, huh? Four ninety nine. I was fine with it. It was four ninety nine at the time, I think. Yeah, because it was such a little small streaming service. If it was ten ninety nine or something like that, nah, I'm good. But it was four ninety nine, and just in case I went over on the seven day period, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have minded. I was working at a casino; I was fine with it. Um, but I was just like, nah, I don't want to pay for this. This is the only thing that's there, and on YouTube Red, nothing else was going on, unless I'm mistaken. What else was going on? Was there another show? Was there another something? Uh, okay. So you weren't. So you're saying you weren't hooked enough to where you would just pay to watch the show on there. Like it was just one show. Like okay. I'm, I'm hooked. I obviously am a hook for Cobra Kai only, but I'm not hooked enough to stay on YouTube Red for the foreseeable future. Like yeah, right, that, if season yeah, two does sense. happen, I'll, I'll go and do it again. But. It was only for one season. We didn't know the the situation. We didn't know the future of Cobra Kai. We just know it was like, oh shit, fifty million views. That's, <laughs> like, a, that's a lot of views. Yeah, and it was top eight. I don't even remember what were the in twenty eighteen. What were the what was the first the top one or top five? But um, I loved it enough. It's like, oh hey, yeah, hey, cool. I loved it enough to tell everybody on at the casino like. Definitely watch Cobra Kai. Everybody, watch Cobra Kai. Twitter, watch Cobra Kai. Friends, family, watch Cobra Kai. What is that? Um, Karate Kid. Okay, cool. Yeah. Two years later later on Netflix. Hey, do you know about this show, Cobra Kai, on Netflix? Fuck you! <laughs> I told you to watch this show a long time ago. It's like, you know who gets to watch season three? Now, you Netflix people. You know who had to wait? Me. Two years. I'm glad you, that I was not you because I would not have wanted to do that. I was upset. I was like, why? There's, oh, there's man, no way. That sucks. We're, not, we're not getting a season three. Oh, that sucks. We had to wait for two years. Like, oh, shit, green, green light. We have a season three. Um, what was your favorite scene? Oh, my favorite scene has to be probably when he... Um, kick the crap out of those kids same that's that's got got to be it that's it and and that was my whole like what i was thinking was the the bullier how do i want to put this so like he was he was the bully back then but then like role reverse like he was i mean he was the defender of the one getting bullied that was my thought like and right there well, and right there, I'm like, I, again, first watching this way back when it first came out, I was like, he's gonna, he's gonna be a good guy. That's that's what's gonna happen. He's gonna be a he's he's totally clueless, stuck in the '80s, but he's gonna be a good guy. That that was my first thought when I saw that scene. <laughs> yeah, um, it ended up being like a trope where all the good guys, I mean, all the bad guys, were getting movies or TV shows. Um, backstories of how they became um bad maleficent was one of them 2014 as uh, a bad freaking whatever she was into what she is now even now like 101 dalmatians gorilla deville like they're they're all getting movies and tv shows and johnny lawrence was one of them but at the same time like he really was the hero yeah yeah, and I, I know yeah, we're gonna. Yeah. We're, well, we're gonna get into. I'm sure we will get into this, but the whole um, uh, debate on 
and I don't know if you, I'm sure you know this, being a Cobra Kai fanatic like I am, how people talk and say that that actually uh, Danny or Daniel was the the bully. It, the have you? Was he was the bully. That's. That's the talk that came about when this when this came to Netflix, anyways, and people were watching it, or you know, and saying, "Well, t- no, Johnny wasn't the bully." And I'm talking referencing Karate Kid, like it wasn't Johnny; it was it was always Daniel. And that's Daniel. like a huge debate, and I'm sure we will get into that. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa. And I'm Dawn. And if you've ever watched a TV show and thought to yourself, oh my god, that season finale plot twist was absolutely bonkers. Or seen a movie and thought, wow, I need to talk to somebody about this train wreck immediately. Then we think you'll fit right in with our podcast, I Hate It, Let's Watch It. We watch TV shows like Riverdale and Emily in Paris. And movies like Deep Water, Killer Sofa, Rubber, and Deadly Illusions. And we give them the total rinse they deserve. It's basically group therapy for movie masochists. So come check us out wherever you stream podcasts. Hey, it's Evo. We're going to get back to the episode you're listening to, but first, let me tell you about Dark Fate Creations. Dark Fate Creations are candles that are vibrant, colorful, marble tops, amazing, mouth-watering fragrances, fueled by lovely braided cotton wicks. Paper threads woven into every cotton wick for a clean, romantic, slow, and consistent burn. Each candle is unique from the next as they are hand-mixed and hand-poured, right in Grass Valley, California. They use only coconut and soy waxes for a safer, cleaner, and longer burn time. That's almost 72 hours. That's like binging on all 130 episodes of the podcast. All fragrance blends have been heavily researched. Dark Fate Creations not only care about the look, fragrance, and quality of their candles and their other products, but also the effects they have in their customers' homes. So go to darkfatecreations.com. The link is will be in the show notes. So episode two, titled Strike First, written but directed by the creators of the show. I'm not going to tell you who they are. You already know who they are. Uh, Subnosis, present day Daniel LaRusso lived a charmed life. That is, until he sees that the Cobra Kai Dojo, the source of his teenage angst and rivalry, has been reestablished by Johnny Lawrence. Struggling to launch the business, Johnny starts teaching karate to his teenage neighbor Miguel. Daniel faces his former opponent and all the offenses are quickly reignited. Also, with Menudo from the 80s. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, it's gotta be. It, it, it definitely. Yes, Menudo is definitely from the 80s. Remember what we're talking about here. He's stuck in the 80s. So like, yeah. And I know we haven't gotten to the part yet, but it's coming. <laughs> 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 active from 1977 um yeah so they were from the 80s he must have known about them from the 80s so it's like the only friggin spanish band that he knows that's like all right menudo <laughs> like what <laughs> like oh my god there's so many spanish bands and he just decides to say the spanish boy band and it's all like I would have. That's probably what I would have said too. To be honest, I would have referenced Menudo if I was stuck in the eighties. <laughs> Menudo was like the most, uh, yeah, the most <laughs> of the eighties. That's so hilarious. Oh man! All right. Um, where are we? So is the office the is cold open? The opposite of Johnny's morning. Daniel starts his day in his mansion. Well, ain't that a kick in the head by D. Martin plays? So it's all immediately right away. We don't hear 80s. We just see like, oh, hey, jazzy, uh, Dean Martin. He wakes up happy next to his wife, Amanda. He gets dressed with a smile on his face and makes breakfast for his son, Anthony, and his daughter, Sam. Uh, we also see that he drives an Audi S7 and is well-liked by his staff and customers. However, it seems that he hasn't left the past behind either. <laughs> and it all comes flooding back when he drives past the strip mall and he sees the sign of for Johnny's newly reestablished jo- dojo on his way home from work. But here, 
jo Johnny is like stuck in his past. Like, oh, you know, I like this song. I like this movie. I like to talk about this. I have these shades. I have, you know, reference Menudo. Uh, <laughs> Daniel's all like, Hey, ain't that a kick in the head? <laughs> hey, <laughs> how small smiles and kissing babies and stuff. Driving the Audi S7. What would he, what did he drive in the eighties? That his mom used to drive him. I was gonna everywhere. say he, he didn't drive it. Was his mom? <clears throat> That's funny. You brought that up, but yeah, the I don't even know what kind of vehicle that was. I don't remember. I just remember they had to push it. They had to push it in the first uh, <laughs> scene of the sh movie. Like, on oh come on! Day. Like, yep, yeah. on his first day. Uh, Allie had to push it. Also. His girlfriend no. had to push it. Well, no, Allie didn't like, have to push it. She she was uh she was in the driver's seat. She got had to pop the clutch, and him and his mom were pushing it. <laughs> so you worse. know. <laughs> uh, it all comes by, comes flooding back when he drives past the strip mall and sees a sign for Johnny newly reestablished JoJo. He stopped the car and he's just like, what? <laughs> Cover Kai, and he immediately gets triggered. He gets triggered. Yeah, like, he did. Oh my god! Everything starts flushing back. Like, dude, get over it. You have a happy life. Leave it alone. No, he's just like, oh, he beat me up. Oh, 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 no, we can't do this. Yeah, all the <laughs> like, all the scene. Yeah, everything. All the flashbacks was him getting beat up. Like, that was his flashbacks. Those were his flashbacks. Though nothing with him and Allie. Nothing about him being happy and shit. No, it's just nope. all flashback. Him yeah. getting bullied. Uh, Johnny, clean shaven and apparently sober, gives Miguel his first karate lesson. It becomes clear that Miguel hadn't expected to take it so seriously. Johnny attacks Miguel unexpectedly to show the first lesson of Cobra Kai. Strike first. When Miguel uses his inhaler to catch his breath, Johnny throws the inhaler against the wall, saying weakness does not exist inside this dojo. And that's the last time we ever see the inhaler. <laughs> it is. But also, um, <laughs> like, I do, every time I see this part, I laugh out loud when he calls them karate pajamas. What? He goes, when do I get my pair of karate pajamas? And John, Johnny goes, it's a gi. It's a gi. Yeah. But he, calls them, he calls them karate pajamas. They aren't pajamas. It's a gi. Yeah. Like, when do I get it? You don't have, you haven't earned them yet. But, oh my God. The, he has asthma. Not anymore. Not after the first episode. It's gone. <laughs> if you know, if you come and practice karate, your asthma will be gone. <laughs> What? This is the inhaler. What happens to the inhaler? What happens if he gets nothing? It was just all in his head. He but, tells him too. It's like all this shit about it is, your, it's your all in his head. Yep. <laughs> and the peanut allergies. It's all in your head. You don't have to worry. You have peanut allergy. Come to the dojo to Cobra Kai. That will be gone. Now go eat some peanut butter. See what happens. I'm cured. <laughs> Like what? Uh, I don't think they were thinking on that one. <laughs> your your weakness is cured when you go join Cobra Kai. Um, and, and so is your allergies. Don't forget that. So are your allergies yeah. and hair, all that stuff. Because that's all just fake. Fake stuff. Yeah. He also tells Miguel that these lessons aren't just for Cobra Kai. They're for everything in life. <laughs> like strike first, go for it. A health inspector then shows up and tells Johnny that he will need to get that place in order before he can open an exercise studio. It's a dojo. It's karate. Luckily, Johnny convinces the inspector that Miguel is an illegal, not a student. You know, fucking. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, like, sir, are you okay? Just why are you sitting down there doing um, sit ups if you're an illegal? Senor, get up. Like, no. <laughs> Uh, the inspector gives Johnny a list of requirements before he can open for business and notes that this place is going to need a lot of work before he can get the certificates to get the insurance he needs to open. He ch goes by the logo. It's like, hey, nice snake. It's a fucking cobra. <laughs> a cobra is a snake, isn't it? A rattle. He said rattlesnake. He said rattlesnake. Oh, oh. oh, hey, nice rattlesnake. It's a cobra. I was like, oh, 
I'm an idiot. Okay. Well, it says right there, Cobra Kai. I don't know how to read. <laughs> he pissed him off some more. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daniel and Amanda attend a party at the Encina Oaks Country Club. Daniel be bemoans to Amanda the fact that he would have loved to be invited to such an event, but neither of their kids is the least bit interested. Um, Sam stayed home while Anthony is more interested in his video game. I would have kicked his ass. Oh, me too. I I was going to ask you what you thought of thought of him. I mean, he's got such a little attitude on him. Yeah. Or leave the fucking video game at home. Just go go hang with the other rich kids. Damn. Well, gosh, not even the video game. Just the way he talks and the way he acts and like, yeah. I don't... Right. Um, no, I feel like Sam was planned. <laughs> <laughs> and Anthony was a mistake. Because <laughs> how they, like, terrible. tell her, hey, hey, Sam, I made you your, your favorite breakfast. Here it is. And then Anthony's all like, can I have some? Oh, yeah. I was like, dude, come on. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> like, what? Like Sam, we love you, honey. We want you to, you know, we want you to be safe. Anthony, get the fuck out of the fucking kitchen. What the fuck? <laughs> like, damn it, Dad. This is why I don't do shit. <laughs> this is why I act the way I do. I know. I, you know what? It's because it's because he doesn't do karate. He didn't do karate with Anthony. Is that his name, Anthony? Yes, so, Anthony. He does karate so Sam. with Sam. So he's got that bond, that special like, bond. A special bond with his daughter because she did karate and he didn't. <laughs> yes. He, cho he chose video games. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking asshole. You chose video games. You're not my kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Aisha Robinson, Sam's best friend from school, asks about her presence, but Amanda lies and tells her she's visiting her grandmother to avoid hurting Aisha's feelings. Amanda sends Daniel's mood and asks him what's wrong. Daniel confides in her his concern about Cobra Kai reopening. Oh my god. <laughs> the LaRusso leave the party earlier than Sam expected, and when they pull into the driveway, they are surprised to see a lot of cars. Amanda and Anthony go inside while Daniel puts the car in park and heads straight to the backyard and discovers that Sam is throwing a pool party for her new friend. Uh, it is clear that Yasmin had convinced Sam to throw the party. Daniel sends everyone home, and Amanda tells her husband that he's overreacting, and there's nothing wrong with Sam wanting to be popular. Daniel somewhat agrees, but expresses concern that his daughter will turn into a privileged and senile brat. Yeah, so glad you didn't marry Allie. Amanda says he doesn't want that either, <laughs> but warns him that if he continues to react the way he did, it could only push her further in that direction. Thinking her words over, he reminisces over the days when Sam was little and was his karate student. Reminding her that karate is exclusively for defense. Um, but is it though? It, it is. Is that is that your opinion that it is? I I I did karate. It was only for defense. Like I was just like bullied and shit, and it's like, hey, here's a super. Here's a kick to the face. <laughs> That's I, mean, I believe, yes, I believe it is self defense. I was just kind of wondering what your opinion was on that. It's for self defense, yeah. Um, the whole party people, everybody showing up and taking Daniel's uh, trunks. Swim trunks? Yeah, like everybody fits in them. <laughs> and that small man's body, even the big dude. Like, hey, man, I just went to your bathroom, and he seems perfect. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Those are big trunks for Daniel. Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm like, what is that? Are those my trunks? Are you all wearing my trunks? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yet you all have a, a different body build, and Daniel looks like that. Like, what? It's like, all right. I believe it. Um. So, uh, yeah, Johnny has Miguel clean mats and even fix some dangerous exposed wiring too. <laughs> like what? <laughs> but unlike Mister Miyagi, doesn't have a uh, hidden karate technique in the chores. 
It's like, hey, um, Sensei, how do you want me to clean this window? It's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm all like, you're going to do wax on, wax off? No, don't care. Do I, you want. See, they should have done that. Oh, no, wait, never mind. That that was Ms., Mr. Miyagi's thing. Never mind. Continue. Yeah, Creed was just like, do it. It's like, okay. <clears throat> Miguel sees Johnny's Old Valley Championship trophies and is impressed. Johnny tells him that he won the Old Valley Tournament twice and brags that he didn't lose a single point his junior year, but quickly changes the subject when Miguel inquires about what happened his senior year. Uh, we all know what happened his senior year. Yes, we do. A kid, who doesn't, a kid that doesn't know karate won. He lost to Daniel. Uh, Miguel's mom calls and Miguel lies, telling her that the debate tournament is running late because his mom doesn't approve of violence. Johnny calls Miguel's ringtone lame and says he should change it to Guns N' Roses, but Miguel doesn't know what that is. And that hmm. is that is and right there, that's my that's probably one of my favorite parts. He doesn't know what that is. The, yeah, change, like back, to, back to the clueless. Well, yeah, the the whole ringtone, um, you know, not knowing what that is, and then and then later on, know. later on, he does change the ringtone. But yeah, that's it's just. They have him so clueless. It's just crazy at how clueless he is. Like, what the hell is that ringtone? Yeah, what is that? Oh, he, oh, no, no, no. He says like, "What is that? Where, where's that coming? Where's from? that coming like, from?" You don't know what a, you don't know what a ringtone or, is. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, yeah. Oh, how are you in 2018 and still like clueless about ringtones? Well, he has he has a flip phone. Do you remember that? Or I mean, do you? Um, that's another <laughs> thing. What? 2000s. Okay, well, yeah. So I guess, yeah. Well, so he's not still stuck in the 80s because they didn't have they didn't even have cell phones then. Well, did they? No. No. Okay. Up until 2000s, this is, it's just a flip phone, yeah. But you don't get any stuff there yet. So he hasn't upgraded since like 20, 2000. Well, yeah, he, he's, that, that's my point. He doesn't upgrade. He's still stuck in whatever he's doing. He said he'd been living in that apartment for 10 years this came out in 2018 so he's been living there for since 2008 man's been living there since like what was going on in 2008 myspace um not enough phones probably not an i itunes itunes iTunes? <laughs> like what itunes maybe around there yeah, but I don't think he even knew like the the whole like website thing. Yeah, he I don't think he, he ever he never touched a computer. Like he he had never touched a computer either. Yeah, he had not He was really out of it. Yeah, he was. Um next scene, Sam is video chatting with her friends Yasmin and Moon over a webcam. Yasmin says that her dad felt bad that she hit a deer and messed her up her car, so he's buying her a new one. Oh great. That Sam says nice. that she still Right? Sam says that she still feels guilty about them rear ending that guy and driving away. Yasmin thinks that the man was on meth and stopping would be a danger to themselves. Daniel comes in to apologize to Sam, but Sam apologizes first for not asking permission. Daniel asks if there's anyone in her friend group he should worry about, and Sam tells him that she's been texting this guy, Kyler. Daniel's <laughs> like, just texting, right? Nothing. Like, oh, gross. <laughs> Daniel suggests that she invite him over for dinner. Hey, it's the first thing you have to ask. <clears throat> right. Uh, <laughs> don't like the mean girls. Yes, man, I'm moon. But I, I, like I, moon I like moon. I like moon. Moon feels so free spirited for some reason. Yes, like, I can. I can relate to moon. I like her. I like Sam too, moon, but I like moon. Moon just reminds me of the first two seasons of Boy Meets World of Topanga. Yes. Like, oh, Absolutely. I'm ready for her to do like some weird dance and put some lipstick all over her face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, uh, agree. I agree. School begins and Miguel makes friends with two social outcasts, Eli and Dimitri. He knows that Sam and falls in love with her, so he attempts to talk to her and approaches her table in which she is sitting with Yasmin and Moon, but leaves when Kyler and Brooks approach the table. Rhea! Back at the dojo, Johnny gets a call from the school regarding his rebellious son, Robbie Keen. Robbie's mother, who has custody of him, did not answer the phone because she was at the bar, of course. Johnny learns that Robbie has been picked on for possession of a drug called Molly. 
Jolly is confused, thinking that Molly is a girl's name. I was just going to say that. Who's Molly? See, Molly. so stuck. Sir, Molly is a drug. How do you not know this, sir? Like, okay, not everybody is all fucking about the drugs. Like, so that just means he's never done drugs before. Okay. Is, 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 that, John, John? is that your defense for, for Johnny? My defense for Johnny is that he didn't know what Molly was, and he so he therefore he's been clean, no drugs, just beer, no drugs though. No. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> they tell him it's not an illegal drug. Uh, it's a girl's name, not an illegal drug. Johnny then attempts to tell Robbie to clean up his act, but Robbie's not the least bit interested in what his strange father has to say, to say, and hangs up. Johnny notices Miguel's crude technique at. First scolds him, but then tells him that he should picture the dummy as his enemy, which is what motivates Miguel to picture the dummy as Kyler. It's like, all right, fine, ah, ah, ah. I love that part. Like he's getting into it. He's getting. He's he's, he's learning. But, he's getting into it. But you know that that refer that is um from Karate Kid Three. Um, the whole board. The kicking the yeah. boards, yeah, or the not kicking. the boards. Sorry, kicking the boarded guy, yeah. If a man can't breed, he can't fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. freaking silver! Oh. Can't wait to do. Can't fire. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Daniel invites Kyler to dinner, where he made his famous Larusso Ponzu Toro with fresh tuna, preparing it with a ceremonial knife that he brought on his first trip to Okinawa. Kyler declines it, saying that sushi and fish gross him out. Dude! But he likes fish sex. <laughs> like, what? Like, immediately um, decides, hey, you're Asian. Let me fix you some sushi. What? That I, is, I, you I, really, I don't think that that's... <laughs> I, don't, I don't like sushi or fish, man. What are you doing? <laughs> like, uh, I don't like sushi. Sushi and fish, sir. Sorry. And that's why he asked, like, where are your parents from? Reseda? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> this greatly upsets Daniel, who worked hard on it. Oh, no, I don't care. How did he work like, hard on it? It's it's raw. He didn't do anything to it. Uh, but the reason that he did not like fish either until a good friend had him try different Japanese foods. Okay, Mm, you're trying to put your your stuff that happened to you onto this kid. He doesn't know. It doesn't work that way, sir. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um, why don't you ask Sam to ask Kyler what he likes to eat first, and then like, oh, cool. Like, all right. What's his name? Kyler. Kyler. What kind of name is Kyler? Oh. No, he knew. He knew who he was because she, um, she told him, like, this guy didn't cut. You met him, right, at the thing? Like, oh, the Asian guy. Yeah, sure. I'll make him some fresh um, sushi and tuna. Don't worry. I got this. <laughs> no! <laughs> like, you don't, don't assume that people like that. Sushi? Kind of not everybody likes sushi. Yeah, not everybody likes sushi. <laughs> fish goes about. But he's, he's all good on fish sticks. <laughs> I'll eat fish sticks, but not fish. It's okay. <laughs> not fish. <laughs> uh, try to make small talk anyway. Daniel finds out that Kyler was in a fight with some guy at a mini mall who used karate because Kyler twisted the story into making it seem like he was being harassed. Mm -hmm. he was an asshole. Yeah, that, that made me mad. Like, really? This is why Johnny doesn't like fucking... Or Daniel doesn't like Johnny because some guy told him, hey... Uh, this old man will kick my ass. Really? I'm going to go talk to him. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you just missed the dude. What the hell? We're trying to like be a nice person about it. The dude think that it was Johnny. Daniel goes to confront Johnny about his method. Dude, you beat up some high school kids. Wrong. I don't agree with this. <laughs> the two argue and Johnny tries to warn Daniel about the kind of friends his daughter has. In turn, Daniel sees and warns Miguel not to listen to Johnny, or else he will end up just like him, and informs Johnny that his rivalry is not over. 
Johnny then challenges Danny on his spot, but Danny waves him off with a smirk and walks out of the dojo. As the two men stare each other down through the window, Johnny offers a smirk of his own, concluding the episode. Johnny's all like, shut up, go away. <laughs> you old man, <laughs> like, go away, sir. I'm trying to run a fucking dojo here. You're just here because you're still hung up on the fact that I kicked your ass. <laughs> Except for the tournament, but, but still. But how about that look? That's the and the, I think that's the that's towards the that's the ending. The look that they give each other when he gets in the car, and then Johnny looks at him, but then he has a little smirk on his face. Like a shit ain't over. <laughs> like it was, yeah. it was it was towards us. It was towards that second episode was for us. It's like oh, I, we know you wanted this. This is the reason why you wanted us. You wanted us to see to fight again. Here we are. We're fighting again. After 40 years. <laughs> 40 years later, we're still going to fight. Because uh, we're old men. One likes jazz. The other one's still stuck in the 80s. Okay, they're old. You keep referring to them as old men. They're old guys. Whatever. But I mean, I'm sorry. But they both look damn good for their age. And they can both fight. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, true. Um, Johnny has to stretch first. <laughs> Johnny has to stretch first. <laughs> Johnny has to stretch first before he fights. Daniel's all like, I, I know karate. I've been practicing ever since I left well, uh, yeah, the tournament. Yeah, he's been practicing with his daughter and everything when she was younger. Me doing the whole thing, Miyagi taught me, that's my stretching. Right. <laughs> All right, episode three. Or wait, um, what do we think? What do you think of this episode? What do you? Think? Uh, well, it was definitely it's it's just it's it reels you in. Let's put it that way. Um, it especially with those with like Kyler and his group, and and then I like how they introduce uh, Menudo's friends, Miguel's friends, um, Miguel. Yeah, like I, I, you know, something's something's gonna go down when they when they introduce them, and you just you know something's gonna go down, and it it just makes you want to keep watching it. Um, I was ready for one of them called Lip, but Lip is from Shameless, oh. so I guess we're not doing. Yeah, no, yeah, Lip is from Shameless. Oh, oh shoot. Um. I love their their what go up their their growth on the show. Well, okay, like but we're, are we, we're we're going in that. Are we going out that far? Because I have lots to say about that. Or are we okay. waiting? We'll, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll yeah, wait. Uh, we, we but... haven't gotten that far. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dimitri and let's just call him Hawk. Oh, yes. Now, see, you're Time. getting ahead of yourself again. Dimitri and Eli. What? Eli is Eli. Eli is the uh, the one with the lip mm -hmm. deformity, and Dimitri is the other nerd, the one, the true nerd. Yes. The one that's like, the, the one that was all of us, basically, is like, oh, you, you, you're going to fight. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. That's kind of, yeah. You're gonna go over there and talk to this girl. Go for it. Look at everybody in this table, man. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> he's the sarcastic one. I'm like, this dude is really gonna get his ass kicked throughout the entire season. I just know it. Dimitri. Yeah, I I just felt like he was I gonna feel get his for ass Dimitri. I I feel for I feel for um uh the other one too. Well, okay, again, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Can't do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, favorite scene. Um. Oh, the, I thought I told you this. Okay. Um. It was uh. It's the phone. It's the phone where he the 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 ringtone. I know it's just a very little scene, but like the it, that ringtone comes on and Johnny's like, "What the hell's that?" And then he uh, um. Change. Wait. Did he change it in this episode? The ringtone. Or is that the next episode? 
No, next episode. Oh, okay. So there, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, yeah, where he just said that all the little things in this episode made me laugh from from Johnny because, like, just little things like that, not knowing what Molly is, um, not knowing what that ringtone where it was coming from, um, gender. When he, when he says uh, when Miguel's like your your gender gender is that gender right? How gender do you say that? Right gender yeah gender. and he's like what are you talking about what is that um just like him being so clueless i just i laugh at every little thing um throughout this whole episode when johnny is just i don't know clueless and dumbfounded um it makes it makes me laugh i just it's i like how they did it i really like how they put him his character in this uh favorite <laughs> scene has to be daniel larusso when he wakes up and is the exact opposite of Johnny. Oh. Where Daniel has the great life. And mm-hmm. you immediately feel for Johnny. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, That's true. fuck that. <laughs> like, that is true. Oh, yeah. Like, this is, yeah. This is why we're cheering for Johnny. Because this yeah. man has everything he's a, about Johnny. He's the underdog. Uh, yep. He's the underdog. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And I can and I can relate to see. And I personally can relate to Johnny. Um, I think that's another reason why I like him. I can really relate to him. And as Daniel, I I can't relate to him at all. Um, right. But I can relate to Johnny yeah, in, in lots of ways. It's like we immediately fly, flipped on Johnny and <laughs> and Daniel from the movies. Like, oh shit, nah, we good. It, it, yeah. <laughs> the goal explain the 1990s in exactly 60 songs radiohead tupac mariah carey lauren hill wonderwall enter sandman you ought to know cream the greater goal move past cheap nostalgia to something deeper and weirder and better my name is rob harvilla i'm a music critic at the ringer and my new show is called indeed 60 songs that explain the 90s since that title is fairly self-explanatory i figured i'd explain what qualifies me to host this here is my resume In 1992, I won a trophy for wearing more corduroy and flannel than any other 13-year-old in America. Freshman year of college, I was in a third-wave ska band that broke up and reformed without me as an emo band. I nearly started a civil war at my college radio station by putting You Got Me by the Roots in heavy rotation. I cried the first time I heard Bjork's Hyper Ballad, which incidentally occurred somewhere between the ska band and the emo band. One time I wrote out the lyrics to Sunny Day Real Estate's In Circles by hand and mailed them to a girl. All of those are true except the first one. This is my perspective. Crucially, in every episode, I'll be joined by fellow writers, critics, musicians, enthusiasts, and ringer luminaries with wildly different perspectives. Whether you're full of teenage angst, or you feel bored and old, whether you don't know the song at all or you know it far too well, we'll take you through the decade one killer track at a time. 60 Songs That Explain the 90s is released every Thursday. Listen for free on Spotify. In a world where true crime meets the supernatural and the unexplained. Where true crime and chills go hand in hand. Welcome to Total Conundrum, the podcast that explores the dark, the eerie, and the downright mysterious. Join us as we embark on a spine-tingling journey through the mysteries that keep you up at night. We're diving deep into true crime stories, uncovering the most baffling cases, and exploring the twisted minds behind them. But we don't stop there. We're also exploring the paranormal, from haunted houses to cryptids and all the creepy things that go bump in the night. Get ready for some supernatural thrills. And what sets us apart? Prepare for a dose of dark humor as we navigate through the creepy and bizarre. (laughs) We've got it all. Bone chilling tales, banter, and mind boggling conundrums. You won't know whether to scream or laugh. (laughs) So grab your favorite snack Turn down the lights and join us for a roller coaster ride of true crime and the supernatural sprinkled with a bit of comic banter. Stay curious, stay captivated, and let's dive into the world of Total Conundrum. Now available on your favorite podcast platform. Get ready to be captivated 
creeped out and cracked up with total conundrum. Episode 3, written by the creators of the show, directed by Jen Salota. What was the episode called? Esqueleto. Episode 3? Episode, episode 3 is called Esqueleto, which is the reference to the recurring line of the Karate Kid 3. No, not yet. Not that one. It is called Esqueleto, which is Spanish for a skeleton. Oh, okay. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you if you knew. I I did not know that's what it meant. I wonder. I wonder. Which, which is a reference to the Karate Kid one when they're all wearing skeletons for Halloween. Yes. Yes. Um, I have. I have a something on that later when we get to that. Sibnas says, Johnny tries to recruit more students to join the dojo. Troubled by his daughter's friends, Daniel chaperones her high school costume dance. Johnny takes Miguel training seriously and starts creating a badass. The episode opens with a nighttime shot looking over to Los Angeles. Sets the strains of some 1980s hair metal, of course. Before it cuts to Miguel's grandmother cooking dinner for the family. She calls to Miguel in his room but mistakes the sound of his karate practice as masturbation. Over to dinner, the family discusses what Miguel's costume should be for school's Halloween dance. Miguel suggests Deadpool, but notes that the costume is expensive. Uh, Miguel's mom looks over at his hand and says, what happened? He says, I hurt myself. Grandma says, oh, is that what you're calling it? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? what, you, what? He immediately says, what, Grandma? What? What are you talking about? Wait, no. What did she just say? <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. I love that moment. Um, as for the song that he was listening to, let me go look. Black by Carrie Kimmel. Okay. Hmm, maybe not. We'll see. Well, put it in there. Uh, meanwhile, Daniel's insecurity about Sam's relationship with Kyler reaches its peak to the extent that he is willing to sneak into his daughter's room and read her instant messages in which Kyler claims to have something big to show her at the school dance. Daniel volunteers to chaperone the dance to keep an eye on her, but Sam makes a promise that he will not embarrass her. I, come on, really? Mom, he's going to embarrass me. Like, what a freaking kid, man. Like, it's not like you're going to be ousted by him. He's just watching over the entire um, school, everybody else, but at the same time, he did read her instant messages and thought, okay, I'm just going to keep an eye on her. Uh, something big, right? Uh, at school, the guidance counselor does a presentation on cyberbullying and not so discreetly detailing how Eli has recently been victimized by it. Um, Miguel tells Eli and Dimitri that he can get them both discounts at Cobra Kai so that they can fight back, but neither are interested. Aisha approaches Sam with the idea of going to the dance as sodium and chloride, respectively, but Sam tells him that she had already planned on going to Jasmine and Moon as Laker Girls, because Laker Girls were good at the time. Good costumes. Sam offers to order another costume so that Aisha can join them, but Jasmine cruelly rebuffs her on account of her size. Already hate Yasmin. I don't like her at all. Mm. She is a typical mean girl. Sodium and chloride um, make salt as Aisha states. And, like, what do you guys mean, sodium and chloride? And not and see. Nasty. Salt. Glorious. <clears throat> it's like, yeah, a little salty there. But, 
you know, Yasmin doesn't get it. At the Cobra Kai Dojo, Johnny has received several past due notices in the mail. He has to pay bills. Desperate to pay the bills, he asks Miguel if he has anyone's interested in taking karate, but suspects he doesn't have any. When Miguel suggests advertising, Johnny bribed the homeless woman to help draw attention to the dojo. It's Lynn! Homeless Lynn. Homeless woman Lynn. <laughs> Lynn the homeless woman. Um, while he walks the streets and handing out flyers, but his efforts are either ignored or met with ridicule. She ends up just using it as, you know, I, I, I need to block the sun. He returns to the dojo where Miguel is eager to show off the new Cobra Kai webpage he developed in the study hall. Impressed, Johnny tells Miguel to meet him at the high school at midnight for her lesson in kicking, which involved Johnny trying Miguel's hands together, tying him, Miguel's hands together and pushing him into the swimming pool. With practice, Miguel is eventually able to break the board with his feet. He and Johnny then prepare for the school dance, but Johnny rejects Miguel's shoddy homely costume and proposes a different one, stating that Cobra Kai has a reputation to uphold. Uh, Miguel attends a dance in a skeleton costume identical to those worn by the Cobra Kai in the 1980s. And there it is. That costume. The costume. The and epic costume. And did you did you do you remember when he uh, or when uh, Daniel saw him walk by in that costume? Yeah, had a moment of flashbacks. Triggered again. Triggered again. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that costume is creepy. I thought it was creepy in the in Karate Kid uh, when they were dressed as a, I don't know why, but I just I just thought those were that was just it was just creepy. I don't mean maybe because they were worn by bullies or something, but it I don't know. Just and creeped me like out. Like at the time, what dude, at the time Daniel was wearing a shower curtain. Shower curtain. And he goes to put water on them while mm -hmm. Johnny taking a poop. Yeah, who's the bully no. now? Well, he was. He was also. He was also rolling. Um, oh yeah, he was. He, he was. Did. He was rolling narcotic. Narcotic. Well, I don't know how what we can say on here, but <laughs> yeah, he was doing that actually in the in the stall. That. He was rolling that good stuff. See, it was rolling all the good stuff. There you go. It was, it was good drug. Not bad yeah. drug. He doesn't know what Molly is, though. <laughs> as long as you call it weed. As long as it's not you know, smoking dope. But but the shower curtain, I mean, I thought that was clever. Didn't you? That was a clever costume. It was. Yeah, because he needed to be invisible. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Miyagi did good. I'm just going to reference him a lot because I liked him. I miss him. Oh, um, Daniel's disturbed by the side and begins to follow Miguel, but when he knows the Cobra Kai flyer tape of the ball, he leaves it down to his friend Glenn Johnny, who's posting flyers all over the school. At that moment, he spies Sam leaving the dance hand in hand with Kyler. It's like, Johnny was right. <laughs> it's like, I'm posting flyers for my business. You should mind your own business. Right? It's like, get away, dude. Or shut up. <laughs> I'm doing my business, man. I'm trying to get paid. What are you trying to do to me? Um, Kyler and Sam end up in an empty classroom. Danny interrupts them, but completely misinterprets an innocent interaction as sexual in nature. Hey, help me with my belt. Feel sexual. Okay? <laughs> like, what the hell, dude? You can't do it yourself? Uh, this makes Sam furious. She leaves immediately. Dad, why do you have to embarrass me again? Um, she tells Jasmine she's ready to leave, but Jasmine cannot resist posting a cruel pig meme about Aisha eating at the snack table before they go. Aisha is immediately humiliated while Samantha watches in silence, causing her Aisha to leave the dance while the other kids laugh. He could have said something to her. Like, even later, it's like Aisha tells her she'll go away. Don't, don't even think about it, go away. Um... Miguel takes a bathroom break with his friends in the boys' locker room, but they run afoul of Kyler's gang. Okay, go back to them using the bathroom, the fucking urinals. Dude, how are you going to wash your hands? Was he planning on washing his hands with those gloves on? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you did it with the gloves on? What are you doing? 
put no. Okay, just all right. What are you gonna do after? Like, oh my god. Um, they run a file of Kyler Yang once more after hearing them sexually objectify Samantha. After they mock Miguel's karate and threaten to attack him again, Miguel left to fend for himself, knocks Kyler down with a jumping front kick. But the gang quickly seizes him and delivers a vicious beating. Afterwards, a dismayed Johnny locates his fallen student and takes him. And that's the end of that episode. Um, the song you were saying was Rat? Yeah, Rat. Round and round. Rat laid down by Rat. What? And he laid down by Rat. Oh, was it laid down? No, it was round and round. Round and round by Rat is the uh, ringtone that played <clears throat> when he changed. Well, he changed his ringtone, and then he said he went down a whole rabbit hole and got into the 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 eighties music, and it's actually really cool. Yeah, it was Rat. <laughs> and round and round. He did it just. He did it just for him. He did it just for Johnny. Yeah, but yeah. Johnny feels like a proud the- dad. Yes, yes, that's what I was just gonna say. And the look on Johnny's face, I love that part. That that's that's my favorite. You're gonna ask me what my favorite scene is, anyway. So that was my favorite scene um, when he did that, and then you know he just he had this he he did he had this proud look on his face, and I just I love that part. Uh, and it's the same freaking episode where he's his um his son's guidance counselor calls and like, what? What do you want me to do with him? He doesn't want me. So here's another kid. Oh, it's like, oh, dude, I'm proud of you. I'm like, damn, that sucks. Um, 80s. I love that. There's 80s hair metal songs on this episode, on these episodes so far. Um, Daniel. Oh, another another yeah. 80s thing I caught too is his uh, his jacket. jacket. Jean, ja- Jean jacket. The jean jacket. The yes. jean jacket. Yep. <laughs> what is it? What is it? The Canadian tuxedo. His, his yeah, Canadian tuxedo. His wardrobe. That yeah, the jean jacket. This jean jacket that was worn when he's in all these other movies. Is that the same jean jacket from the eighties? From his eighties movies? Did he? It, I mean, it very well could be, but I don't know. I did not fact check that. I there are other movies that he was in. Just one of the guys. Yes. That's the exact same jacket he yeah. wore in Just One of the Guys. That is, I love that movie. And yeah, that's the one I was, okay, yeah. Yeah, he did have a jean jacket on, didn't he? Did he have the same sunglasses too? He probably did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God, there it is. Um... <laughs> Uh, I don't think about the. I don't think he had the same sunglasses. But oh. he in every movie that he was ever in in the eighties, he was just like bully, like ready to fight people. Maybe it was a maybe it was a wardrobe budget thing. With the they had to use the same jacket. I don't know. Probably. Um, I mean, it was the eighties, right? Yeah. So your favorite scene was that one. My favorite scene was doing the whole skeleton thing. And just like fucking Daniel has a heart attack and remembers all the times mm-hmm. he got beat up by them. <laughs> it's like, yes, that's what you get. Triggered You're gonna get again. triggered by that, dude. Trigger Daniel. Poor, <laughs> like, poor, what? poor Daniel. Daniel's triggered by Cobra Kai. <laughs> like running amok. <laughs> running amok. Uh, but it was only one. I mean, they weren't all dressed in the skeleton costume, like all three of them. It was just, it was just uh, Miguel, right? Yeah, just one so, person. And yeah, just one. And the other two were, um, what do you call him? What did, Eli was a, um, a doctor. Yeah, and the other one was a necromancer. From what I remember, a necromancer. <laughs> like, like I'm a priest? No, sir, I'm a necromancer. We didn't know. What are you doing? Such a nerd. <laughs> like, I, 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 I like him. I like him a lot. Uh, no, right. uh, Yeah. Oh no. Go ahead. No, we're good. 
I was just going to say the ending to the, the ending to this um, broke my heart with the, um, when he got, when he got beat up in the bathroom and cause that's how it ended. He got beat up in the bathroom and then uh, Johnny found him. And then right there, it, it just ended and you're like, Oh, here we go. Yeah. Like, Oh, now he's going to show him what's up. All that stuff. Uh, yeah. I hated that. Um, Um, anything else that we might have missed? Mm. I was going to ask you about the uh, the the pool scene. Oh, the kicking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, um, I I liked his uh his I yeah his uh technique. I liked Johnny's technique. technique where he pushed him into the pool and didn't think to ask if he could swim. That was probably another favorite part of mine, actually. Lift him up. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh shit! I forgot to ask him if he could swim. <laughs> um. Just keep kicking. Just keep kicking. Just keep swimming. Dude. Okay. So he starts kicking and kicking and kicking. Like and it at least like a five minute little montage there until security shows up. It's like, oh shit, we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um. So what did you think of all these three episodes? Are we are we like were you what episode were you hooked? Like in the first for real? Or in the yeah. second? Um in the first one? I, I don't know. I mean I'd have to probably say the I'd have to say the first. I'd have to say the first because because I was I, I really was I was a hardcore karate kid fan. So Same. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, but I <laughs> Not gonna lie, I really was. Um, I still am, and I just um, that I just had to see where this was gonna go. So yeah, definitely hooked on the first episode. For anybody that has not seen Cobra Kai, I highly suggest that you watch it. It is, it is good, good. Right before July eighteenth hits. Before, before the season. July eighteenth, yes. And it's gonna be five episodes, <laughs> or you can wait until March. And watch oh all my 15 of goodness! I I see. I can't do it. I I can't do it. I have to watch. I have to watch them when they come out, and then I'll just complain that you know we have to wait for the next five. That's what I'm gonna do. Exactly. Why I'm just like, let's do like a few of these episodes, and then do a standalone episode. Yeah. And then at the end of the season, do two episodes, and just like remark on those two episodes, rewatch them. And then the next season, do because by the time we get to July eighteenth, we're gonna be like, shit. What do we do now? <laughs> like, right. No. Oh man, it was so much. Um, let us know what you thought of this episode. Let us know what you think of Cobra Kai uh, from under the apron at gmail dot com. And like, we're gonna get to episode four next time. Um, next week, you want to do next week, or do you want to do like, sure, every two weeks? It's up to you. Like how, however, think, our schedule. I think, whatever I think two schedule weeks is going to be too on. long. Two weeks is too long. I think two weeks too long. Yeah. All right. So every week we're going to come to you with new episodes of Cobra Kai as well. All right. So hope you all enjoyed this episode of Backdrops and Backlots. Let me know what you guys thought of it by emailing at promenadeapen at gmail.com, and I will gladly read it on the air. And if you want to do a little bit more, follow and support us on Instagram, the thread, YouTube, apron underscore stories on the Twitter. We also, we're also we also getting a Blue Sky account. I don't know what that is, but it feels like Twitter when it was going through the whole X thing. People were like scrambling and stuff and Blue Sky is another alternative for Twitter, but like I'll start doing. I'll, I gotta go check out what the name of it is over there. Follow and join the lives on TikTok at Evolution of the Geek by subscribing or join us. Show up to the live streams and hang out with the rest of the M3P Network Squad. And I will shout you out at the end of every episode, like Menace Smiling, Alexandria, Brandy, Queen of Cats, Nighty, Lila Linguini, Turtle Boy Flora, the Moss Queen. Moonlight Dancer, Squirrely Bree, Kimmy, Feeling Free, LB, Ron Snow, JJ the Jet Pain, Sammy Sally 2.0, Tender Surrender, Forever Jane, Red Casper 1, Bunny Rabbit, Dreamer Queen 4786, Hall Free Slot, Tanya Rose 78, Jack Grunchwich, 
Smiley120889, Purple Moose Crafting, Princess in the Herb, Tiffany the Fast Girl, Nerd in Texas Podcast, Little Creative Tina. And don't forget to get 20% off on adult toys when you enter discount code EVO at Pleasure Passport. That shop, Brandy. That yep. discount code once again is E V O at Pleasure Passport. That shop. <laughs> <laughs> Link will be in the show notes. Uh, thank you for supporting, listening to the podcast, joining the TikTok Live, and being a huge part of my third place network community. Tell your friends. Brandy, thank you for stopping in, hanging out with me. Talking Thank about you for Kai. having me. Yes, it was awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to do more of these with Brandy as well. She's going to come along on this Cover Kai journey. And we're going to have fun doing it, right? We are. It was I'm a lot glad of fun. We are. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad you're, you're here. I'm glad you did this. <laughs> Join us next time for more behind the scenes stories, movies, and TV show reviews when we come to you from other the apron. I'm Evo. I'm Brandy. And remember, and remember <laughs> strike first. Strike hard. No mercy. No mercy.